Hi folks, welcome to the A Minute to Midnight show. With me today I have Alex Newman and for those that have been following A Minute to Midnight for a while I'm sure you will um, not need any introduction as to who Alex is but perhaps very quickly you can let people know and then tell us what you want to share with us today Alex. Uh, well thank you so much for having me Tony, I appreciate it. Um, not sure exactly what to say about myself, uh, love the Lord and uh, everything I do is for His glory. Um, my job, I guess, is journalist. I, um, I uh, Ephesians 5, verse 11 has been my motto. I have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them, or a lot of translations use the term expose them. So I get to expose um, all day, every day, six days a week. And um, I teach. I'm an educator. I serve on a lot of boards. I host a number of uh, different uh, programs, uh, senior editor at the New American Magazine. My personal website is libertysentinel.org. And um, yeah, just an evangelical Christian trying to uh, do my part as a member of the body of Christ. That sounds great. Actually, just before we launch into it, with you see, saying about um, you know your job and exposing things and so on, I just want to quickly mention to People, you know, we had a cyclone, a major cyclone in New Zealand recently, a few weeks ago. Not much mention of it in America, but people died and, you know, probably the most amount of um, damage ever in a natural climate disaster related disaster in New Zealand history. But there was a lot of unsubstantiated reports in alternative media, which completely irked me, you know, where you would get something like somebody's second removed cousin-in-law's sister's boss's brother had seen, you know, or they know somebody that had seen hundreds of bodies floating in the in the ocean from the flooding and so on, and there's all these hundreds of dead people and, of course, no photos and all that, but the alternative media got on it big time and published that stuff and it got out everywhere. Well, the official death toll is 11 and um, there's been no, you know, substantiated evidence for any of that other stuff, and it's just made the alternative media look like a bunch of idiots, basically, you know, the, so the mainstream media gets on, and, you know, all these conspiracy theorists, you know, and blah, 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 and um, and it's like, folks, we need to just really spread truth and not unsubstantiated reports, but um, obviously now they're jumping on the climate change bandwagon big time, because, oh, the cyclone, they don't tell you that the temperatures have been cooler than normal to go with this. I mean, I've never seen such a cool summer in New Zealand ever in my life. But um, this climate change religion rolls on, so maybe I'd just be interested in your thoughts there. Uh, well, I'm glad we started here. Actually, last weekend I was at the uh, Heartland Institute's 15th Annual Climate Change Summit, uh, and the fake media doesn't want you to know that this exists. Um this is a gathering of some of the most brilliant scientific minds in the world, some of the most highly credentialed people in the world, uh, scientists from MIT, Harvard, Princeton, Yale, uh, you know, many of whom have worked with and for the UN IPCC, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, all of them in unison saying, stop, this is a gigantic fraud. Your carbon emissions are not causing catastrophic climate change. That's a hoax. It's a scam. They're trying to steal your freedom. Um, I interviewed probably um, a dozen of these scientists. Many of them I, I know. I've, I've, I've interviewed them before. Um, I mean, these are the cream of the crop, right? Uh, these are the people who, are, if they were saying what the fake media wanted them to say, they'd be on your nightly news program every other night. They'd be called in to commentate whenever there was a hurricane or a cyclone, and they'd say, oh, yes, global warming is responsible. Give us all your money and your freedom, and then we'll save you. Uh, but because they're not, then the fake media just wants to disappear them. I'll give you some examples. Uh, I interviewed, uh, again, uh, Dr. William Happer. He is a, uh, a professor emeritus of physics at Princeton University, one of the world's leading experts in this field. Uh, in fact, for years, he was actually uh, Donald Trump's uh, climate advisor. Um, wonderful, wonderful man. Um, I, I first ran into him. He and I both spoke at a climate conference a few years ago in Phoenix. And um, some of the things that he said there stuck with me forever. Um, in his speech and in, in later when I was interviewing him, one of the things he said was that the earth is starving for more CO2. That uh, He said the plants on this planet were designed, which I thought was a really 
Nice choice of words for uh, uh, an elite scientist like that. Uh, he said they were designed to live in an atmosphere with four to five times as much CO2. And so, uh, you know, the idea that um, CO2 is bad for the planet is totally preposterous. He said we need more CO2. Uh, I just ran into him again at this latest summit last weekend, and uh, he was, again, crystal clear. CO2 is good for the planet. We should encourage more people to use CO2 and, uh, and to produce CO2. And I asked him, what happens if, if uh, the, the liars, the movement gets its way? He said, well, you know, I hope it won't get as bad as Cambodia under Pol Pot. But, uh, you know, I think you need to look at the Soviet Union if you want to see truly the direction that these people are taking us in. And this is not a, a hysterical guy. This is not some kind of, you know, right wing extremist or Christian fundamentalist the way that the fake media. This is a, a, a you know, a, a nerdy scientist with all due respect. I, I don't mean nerdy in a bad way. He's just a, a very smart individual. Uh, and of course, the media doesn't want to hear from him. Uh, I ran into and interviewed also Dr. Richard Lindzen, uh, Professor. Professor Emeritus of Meteorology at MIT, Massachusetts Institute of Technology, one of the most prestigious universities on planet Earth. This is his field of expertise. He said the same thing. These people don't understand how the climate works. Uh, doing the things that the UN is proposing, he said, in clear language, would hurt billions of people. Um, and this was the same message I was getting from all these people. Uh, there were very prominent political leaders there. We had U.S. Senator Ron Johnson of Wisconsin. Uh, you know, there's only 100 U.S. senators. Every state gets two. Um, Congresswoman Laura Boebert from, or Lauren Boebert from Colorado was there. But not a peep about this from the fake media. So when, when they say that, uh, you know, scientists agree that uh, your carbon dioxide is causing the planet to cook, uh, it's just a lie. It's just an absolute lie. And all they had to do was send a camera crew to this event. They could have talked to dozens of the world's leading experts on this subject, again, including many who worked on the UN IPCC. Uh, Dr. Richard Lindzen was one of their lead reviewers on the IPCC report that won that ridiculous Nobel Prize with Al Gore. Why aren't they going to talk to him? It's because he's going to explain that this is all a giant fraud. Um, and so we get the same thing here in the United States, Tony, as you know, every time there's a hurricane, a tornado, a fire, a drought, too much rain, too much snow, same thing. The, the clowns of the fake media tell us that this is because of our carbon emissions, um, which is, of course, an inaccurate term in and of itself, right? We're carbon based life forms. We're talking about carbon dioxide here, but um, it's a scam. And if you look at the data, it's a scam. There, there are now less deaths from natural disasters. There, there is uh, less tornadoes now than there were 50 years ago. In fact, I talked to uh, Steve Malloy. He's the publisher of Junk Science, and this is all on camera. People can go see it. Uh, he pointed out, uh, and he used the government's own data to confirm it, that over the last eight years, we've put out, I think he said 500 billion tons of CO2. Don't quote me on that number. Uh, and he said, and yet for the last eight years, there hasn't been one iota of global warming. Therefore, the hypothesis that emissions of CO2, human emissions of CO2 produce global warming uh, is obviously incorrect. And yet nobody wants to talk about it. Yeah, well, well that's really uh, interesting, isn't it? Because they will, if somebody gets a record high temperature one day somewhere or it's particularly warm, but the media will jump on that big time. And, pl and but, that, but then you haven't really heard an awful lot about California's snow storms for you know in the media really and um in new zealand you know we had a, like say a couple of places down the south island that had i think record temperatures for a couple of days or whatever but they haven't told you that the rest of us have had much cooler than normal summer obviously it's been wetter but that's all climate change that's that's it whatever it is anything that's weather that's different is climate change and we've got to stop it <laughs> Yep. And, uh, you know, one of the things that I did, I, I've, I've looked at I tried to figure out different ways to explain this to people who are not scientists, because I get it. You know, we, most of us don't have time to go get a Ph.D. in atmospheric physics or, you know, things like that. We're, we're just normal people. We have lives to live. we got to go do our job, whether that's plumbing or, or you know, what, whatever it is we do. We've got to feed our families. We don't have time to, to go investigate this. So I've looked for ways to, to prove that this is false using uh, very non-scientific means, right? Uh, and I have found two that I think are very, very promising, and I've written extensively on both of these. Uh, the first one, and, and this I just published on recently in the, the Epic Times, which is now one of the biggest newspapers in America. I think it's the fourth largest by subscriptions in this country. Uh, again, you won't hear this in the fake media, but you can go read my column, and that is Communist China. If the people at the top of the food chain here for the climate cult actually believed that human emissions of CO2 were bad for the planet, were dangerous, et cetera, the worst thing that they could possibly do 
And I mean, the worst thing that they could possibly do is shut down industry in the United States, shut down industry in New Zealand, in Australia, in Canada, in Japan, in Western Europe, and shift that industry over to communist China. Why? Because a unit of economic production in the United States or in New Zealand or in Canada or in Germany or in Japan consumes a, or produces a fraction of the amount of CO2 emissions that that exact same unit of economic production would produce in China. Uh, in China, most of their energy comes from dirty coal, right, which spews CO2 into the atmosphere. There are no mechanisms to capture any of that CO2 or even to clean the actual pollution out of the emissions that are coming from these power plants, unlike all across the Western world. Uh, and yet, this is exactly what they're doing, and they're celebrating it. See, I was at the UN Climate Conference in Paris in 2015, where they came up with the Paris Agreement, and I saw this happen, Tony. I just couldn't believe what was happening in front of my eyes. You had Obama showed up there. Obviously, he had to bring a private jet and all his people. They had to bring limousines and helicopters, you know, the, the same mm -hmm. spiel. Yeah. Um, and, and so they come out. They say, we're going to reduce CO2 emissions uh, by Americans by about a third by the year 2025. That's what Obama promised. And uh, he, he went and started doing executive orders, decrees as if he were some sort of like climate king or something. Um, and so that was his promise. And, and all the, the goobers clapped, all the lemmings were you know, cheering. What great news. Even the journalists there, I, I call it the cheerleading section. They're all clapping like trained seals. Uh, and then the communist Chinese make their announcement and they say, oh, we're going to continue increasing CO2 for at least the next 15 years. Then we're going to peak maybe in 2030. And then we'll possibly think about reducing our emissions from there and all the train seals. Yay! Right? Uh, now, again, if you truly believed that human emissions of CO2 were bad, the worst thing you could do ever would be to shut down energy and then shut down industry in the United States and ship it over to China. That's exactly what they did. And all the trained SEALs were clapping about this. So you don't need a degree in any kind of science to realize if these people truly believed CO2 was bad, they wouldn't be celebrating a system, an agreement that is going to result in massively more CO2 in the atmosphere. That's just common sense. The other thing that I have written on extensively that I encourage people to look into, I mean, you can verify uh, all of this uh, for yourself, and that is the long track record of these global warming theorists in their uh, predictions. So I, I've done a couple of articles on this. Uh, people can find the headlines very easily in almost any search engine. I think Google now is doing everything they can to suppress us. They, they formed an official agreement with the United Abominations to uh, suppress what they call climate misinformation, which in this case is just facts. Uh, and to promote the UN's agenda. So they've buried us. But the headlines, climate alarmists have been wrong about virtually everything. Uh, that was in January 5th, 2016. Uh, the previous one that I wrote on this same subject with different examples was embarrassing predictions haunt the global warming industry. And so uh, people can go through and read these. And, and it was a very representative sample. I took all of the predictions that were falsifiable. And by falsifiable, I mean you know, they said X was going to happen by X date or Y date. And so we can look Y date has passed. Did X happen? Uh, so I took all the falsifiable predictions I could find and I, I wasn't cherry picking. You can go look at their predictions, see if you find any that actually did come true. You'll be surprised there are none. Mm -hmm. um, but so I started back in 1975, right? Newsweek, uh, one of many mainstream American publications, they had a cover story. The cover of their magazine was called The Cooling world. Uh, they claimed that Earth's temperature was plunging, that we were all going to die from global cooling. Incidentally, they said that the reason for this global cooling was carbon dioxide emissions <laughs> by mankind. I, I kid you not. People can go read this. Uh, they said that scientists were demanding the very same solutions that they're demanding now for global warming. Um, one of the interesting things that they said, uh, they, they actually quote, climate scientists suggesting that uh, we melt the Arctic ice cap by covering it with black suit. Uh, so that was the one different uh, solution. But of course, that was totally wrong, right? All the way up through the early 1980s, they were predicting global cooling as a result of CO2 emissions. Then it switched to global warming. Um, you can go read those predictions. And I've got a ton of them in here. You know, we, we could spend time. But um, uh, for example, the end of snow, right? The IPCC in uh, its 2001 report said the world was going to have milder winter temperatures. We were going to have a decrease in heavy snowstorms. And then I actually looked at the data. What happened in the 20 years after uh, those predictions were made? Well, we had record high levels of snow cover all across the northern hemisphere. Uh, and, and I got this data from the government itself, right? This isn't made up data. This is coming from the same government that's making these silly predictions. Um, massive levels of snow. Uh, they predicted melting ice caps, right? I actually watched Al Gore at the climate conference in Copenhagen say that uh, predictions are that by 2013, the North Polarized 
ice caps are going to be completely gone. Of course, they actually grew 50% between when he said that and when the prediction was made. And so over and over again, you know, I, I could do this for an hour, but over and over and over again, they've made these really dumb predictions and almost the opposite is what happened, right? They predicted, they, they showed this map, the UN did, all these different cities that were going to be flooded, that were going to be mass producing millions of climate refugees. Turns out those are actually the fastest growing areas of the world, and they should already be underwater according to the UN's own predictions. So they're, they're either total idiots, right? And, and we could take a, a monkey and give them some dice and have the monkey throw the dice. The monkey would do a much better job than the UN, um, or they're lying. Uh, and I think just with basic statistical analysis, you know, you'd figure if they were just genuinely wrong, genuinely stupid, half of their predictions might come right, uh, might might come true from time to time. But no, they all are wrong. Same thing with their temperature models. They're always consistently wrong. Uh, and the laws of probability suggest that this is almost certainly deliberate. Oh, I would agree. It is deliberate because there's an agenda that they're foisting doesn't matter what the you know the real things that are going on are and they don't tell you of course soon as there's like there's a hurricane or a cyclone we call them here you know it's like oh this is a sign of climate change and this is you know they're going to get worse and you know and blah 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 but i look at you know historically here uh, parts of the hawks bay here were really decimated recently by the you know by the cyclone and um and they make a big song and dance about that. But if you actually look back to 1938, a very similar event happened in 1938 in the same area. And um, was that climate change? <laughs> you know, <laughs> was that carbon emissions? Um, yep. But, you know, they, they really don't tell you this stuff because it doesn't suit the agenda. That's right. Uh, and, and you see this so clear. I mean, I, I live in Florida now. Um, you know, Florida has always had catastrophic hurricanes. If you go back and look at the history of human settlement in Florida, um, it was a regular occurrence that huge numbers of people would die from hurricanes. I mean, one of the most, I think the most catastrophic storm to ever hit our state was over 100 years ago. Uh, it just wiped thousands of people out to sea. They were, you know, that was before weather predictions. People didn't realize this monster was coming. And all the islands in the Florida Keys were just covered in water. And all these people just got swept out to sea while they're trying to build a railroad. Um, was it global warming back then? Of course it wasn't, right? Uh, and yet if that same storm hit today, it would be global wall-to-wall -wall coverage about how your car, your stakes, yeah. your power plant is what's causing this. Um, it's so fundamentally ludicrous. And the reality is they know that adults aren't going to believe this. Uh, this dog and pony show is really aimed at children. Um, yeah. They've, they've looked at the polling data. They know that most American grownups are not falling for this propaganda. So they're really doing this for the benefit of brainwashing the children. Um, and that's the real threat here, right? I don't think there's any risk that um, Americans 45 and up are going to suddenly say, oh, I believe in global warming. Please take away all my money and freedom. But they know that, you know, eventually these people will die off and the brainwashed young zombies who came through the government school system with CNN propaganda will eventually take positions of leadership. And that's what, what's going on here. This is the long game. They recognize this. Um, and they actually outlined this strategy long before global warming and climate change became a household word. If you go back to the uh, Club of Rome in 1991, right as the uh, supposed collapse of the Soviet Union was happening, um, they were thinking, and the Club of Rome, by the way, included many communists like Mikhail Gorbachev, they were thinking, well, now that the Cold War is ending, at least on paper, um, how are we going to justify this massive government? How are we going to justify these enormous bureaucracies? Why do we need millions of people working for the government? And so they came up with this idea and they put it in their report, The First Global Revolution, that we need a new enemy to unite mankind. And they said this enemy should be climate change. Why? Because then the real enemy is humanity itself. Mm. So, um, I mean, that, that is something that you could just imagine coming straight out of the mouth of Satan, right? Humanity is the enemy. Those wicked things made in the image of God, let's exterminate them. Let's wipe them out. Let's kill them in abortions, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and, and I think it's, it's really that simple. This is demonic. It's based on lies. We know who the father of lies is. And so when you see a consistent pattern of lying, you got to figure that this is, um, you know, it's coming from the pit of hell, so just be blunt. Yeah, totally agree. Okay, so one more thing, you know, with the UN United Abominations, as you call them, which I thought is very good, you, we've got this um, pandemic treaty thing coming up soon. What can you tell us about that? Uh it's something that I've been sounding the alarm about for a long time. Uh, actually, uh, last summer, I, I had a front page above the fold cover article or a front page story in the Epic Times 
um, warning that they were working on this. Um, and, you know, I, I got the usual when, when whenever the fake media did look at it. They, oh, he's just being paranoid. Well, here we are. Uh, they've released a draft. The draft is even worse than we possibly could have imagined. It basically turns uh, Dr. Tedros Ghebreyesus, who's not even a medical doctor, uh, into the global health dictator. Um, and, and then, you know, you stop and you add a little bit more to that, right? Th this lunatic, and, and before becoming the dictator of health for the world, um, he was the right-hand man for a mass murdering communist dictator. Uh, and before becoming the right-hand man for a mass murdering communist dictator, he was on the Politburo of a mass murdering ethno-Marxist terrorist organization called the Tigray People's Liberation Front. You can't make this stuff up. I mean, it's a genocidal Marxist organization that was trying to exterminate the Amhara people. And the Amhara people in Ethiopia have been trying to tell the world about this but the fake media doesn't want to listen. So that's the guy they're going to elevate to global health dictator. Um, if you read the draft of the agreement, uh, they would basically take total control of global pandemic response. They would get control over treatments, over uh, uh, methods to prevent it, like vaccines. They would even have the authority under the guise of equity to confiscate uh, goods and services from Americans or from New Zealanders to redistribute them to other countries that didn't have as much money. Now, frankly, you know, I'd, I'd confiscate all those injections and toss them right into the sea. But, uh, you know, what we're dealing with here is an unprecedented amount of power. And then you take the public statements that Dr. Tedros and other leaders of this World Health Organization have been making. Climate change is a global health crisis. Gun violence is a global health crisis. Racism is a global health crisis. And to them, everything that stands in their way is racism. Uh, and you realize there's nothing that is outside the purview of these wannabe health totalitarians. So, um, you know, th this is an incredible risk to freedom. It's an incredible risk to self-government. It's an incredible risk to our health, by the way. Uh, if you wonder who made all the terrible health decisions over the last three years, look no further than the World Health Organization. That's why everything seemed so coordinated at the global level. That's why Susan Wojcicki, uh, for then CEO of YouTube, said, whatever contradicts the recommendations of the World Health Organization, we're going to remove it. Right? That's why you couldn't hear any of the facts on YouTube, because they got in bed with the World Health Organization and decided to censor everything that contradicted their narrative. Uh, so this is a recipe for catastrophe. Uh, what I can tell you, though, in addition to that, is that fortunately, we still live in America. And I don't know what the situation is like for you guys in New Zealand, but we here in America, we still have on paper, at least the Constitution is the supreme law of the land is how the Constitution is described in the Constitution. Um, to be valid, any international treaty has to be ratified by two thirds of our U.S. Senate. There is not a snowball's chance in hell that this abomination is going to be ratified by two thirds of the Senate, period. It's dead on arrival there. It's not going to happen. Uh, and so Biden is pretending like he doesn't have to get it ratified. They're they're now calling it an accord and uh, kind of like uh, Obama tried to do with the Paris Agreement. We're just going to tack it on to previous treaties and pretend like it's not a new one. Um, so they're going to try to do that. But we also still have in this country um, the division of power, not just within different branches of the federal government. We also have the division of power vertically. So the states came together and created the federal government and delegated a few tasks to that federal government. Any task that was not delegated to the federal government is by definition, and this is stated explicitly in our Constitution, is reserved. It's a power reserved either to the states or to the people. So first of all, they're not going to get this ratified. Second of all, it's unconstitutional even if they were able to get it ratified. The federal government can't expand its powers just by signing a treaty. That would be crazy. What would be the point of having a constitution then? And third of all, they're going to need the cooperation of state and local governments to implement this atrocity. And I can tell you, having spoken to many, many state legislators, state lawmakers, it's kind of like every state has its own parliament, I guess, would be the closest equivalent to what you guys have. Um, every state has its own lawmaking uh, system. And I can tell you, there's at least half, probably well over half of the states that are not going to be participating in this. Um, there are already efforts to put laws on the books that actually specifically prohibit any state or local local government employee or any state or local government resources like cars, vehicles, uh, warehouses, buildings from being used to enforce or implement any policy coming out of the World Health Organization. So it's not going to be as easy as uh, some of the fear mongers want us to think. They're not just going to steamroller over us and, uh, you know, we're all going to go to a, a World Health concentration camp. We've got a lot of checks in between us and them. Uh, and I thank God for that. Yes, okay. Well, that's something positive because in some ways people are pushing it as almost as a, like it's a done deal. But it it, it didn't go through. They This is the second time it's been presented, right? They did it a year ago and it, and it failed at that point as well. So they're going to be bringing it forward again in May. Is that, is that correct? 
Yeah, well, there's two separate threats here, and um, and I actually sounded the alarm about both of them in my article last year in the Epic Times, and then again in a cover story that I did for the New American Magazine. Um, and so the two different, they're, they're two separate threats, but they're both closely related. One is the amendments to the international health regulations. So the international health regulations is kind of the the governing regulations of the WHO, uh, and that's one of the mechanisms they want to use to further empower the World Health Organization. The other mechanism that they're trying to use, uh, and the the draft treaty that I mentioned. That that they just released. Um, that is that is this part. Uh, that is the international pandemic treaty. So this is a new. Now they're starting to call it accord, just because treaty they know has to be ratified by the U.S. Senate, and that's not going to happen. Um, so they're twin threats. Both of them are ultimately aimed at the same objective, which is radically empowering the World Health Organization. But um, yeah, you know, we we do have numerous uh, obstacles in the path of this becoming a done deal. Now, the same may not be true for New Zealand. You know, you guys have a government that I think is much more amenable to this. You have a population that is much more amenable to this. Um, We in the United States still have a lot of opposition to all of this. And a lot of the people opposed to it are in very significant positions of power, whether that be in the U.S. Senate, whether that be uh, leaders of most of the states in the United States are actually governed by Republicans. Um, so they have a big problem on that front in implementing it, either through the international health regulations or through the international pandemic treaty. They're going to have a tough time with both of those. But I think the Biden administration wants us to believe it's a done deal so that we'll just say, oh, OK, well, there's nothing that can be done. We're just going to submit to this. And uh, frankly, I can assure you that's not going to happen. Mm, OK, that's interesting. But uh, America actually has more uh, lingering COVID restrictions than we do here. We've basically got virtually none here now, but I can't still get into Amer- in, into America as an unvaccinated foreigner, whereas anybody can come to New Zealand regardless of their vaccination status. But yeah, um, and, and that varies a lot, Tony, by where you're at. I'm sitting here in Florida. We have virtually none, uh, although it's true that because the federal government controls international ports of entry, um, that that rule is still on the books. But I will say this. Um, Republicans are in control of the House of Representatives right now. And under our system, you know, we have the two chambers of our legislature, our national legislature, and all spending bills have to come out of the House of Representatives. Uh, So I've spoken with multiple members of Congress uh, just in the last few months uh, on the Republican side, and they have told me that as soon as the opportunity comes and the opportunity is coming in September, they're going to start defunding a lot of this stuff. So the Biden administration can't do anything if they don't have money. Right. If if the House of Representatives won't pass a law, uh, an appropriations bill giving the Biden administration money to do something, they're not able to do that. And so what happened um, prior to the last election at the end of 2022, we had what's called the midterm elections, um, a number of um, Republicans, we call them rhinos, Republicans in name only, joined forces with Democrats to pass this monster appropriations bill, $1.7 trillion, that basically kept all of Biden's priorities in place until September of this year. Once September comes, they're going to need money again, and then they're going to have to find, they're going to have to peel off at least a good number of Republicans to get these things funded. Uh, one of the things that I know members of Congress are talking about right now is defunding the World Health Organization. If the House of Representatives won't pass any money for the WHO, Joe Biden can't send any money to the WHO. If they won't pass any money for the Department of Health and Human Services to implement decisions of the WHO, the Department of Health and Human Services won't have any money to implement those things. If they won't pass money to stop people at the border who haven't been injected with COVID, same thing. So, um, you know, yeah, the situation looks dire, but there are still mechanisms that can be used. Now, would I put my faith in Republican politicians? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Right. Uh, You don't want to put your trust in man. You don't want to put your trust, especially in kings, princes or politicians. But there are still numerous obstacles before the WHO and the Biden administration can get their way. And this fight is going to really heat up come September. Okay, that's interesting. That's a really good perspective to get. I, I mean, I know a lot of Americans don't even really seem to understand your own system. Like I got people immediately sending me, oh, the House, house has um, passed a bill to s- stop them. Well, there were three different ones, you know, but one of them was like so that people like me can get into America. But, I, I, I mean, that means nothing because it it got to go to the Senate and they probably won't even look at that bill, you know. So, um this is a, so nothing's really changed. It, it's a complicated system to understand. I think uh, you know it a is. lot of a lot of us don't. I mean, I'm an outsider, but I notice a lot of Americans don't seem to understand it either. 
judging by the and emails by I get, you know. That's all by design, Tony. They have dumbed down our population for multiple generations now uh, through the public school system. There's a deliberate agenda to make sure Americans don't understand the Constitution. Uh, and I mean, it's not just everyday Americans. Uh, Joe Biden nominated this lady to be a federal judge. That is, she's already a judge. He nominated her to be a judge on one of the most powerful courts in the United States. And uh, one of the senators who the senators have to uh, uh, consent to these nominees says, uh, so what does Article 5 of the Constitution say? Mm, I don't really know. What does Article 2 of the Constitution say? Mm, I don't really know. Uh, completely clueless about the con- And these are judges who are supposed mm-hmm. to be making decisions based on the supreme law of the land. So there's been a deliberate agenda to um, to dumb down Americans to to create massive confusion about what our Constitution actually says. Uh, and it's very unfortunate. But the Constitution is still the operating supreme law of the land. Uh, and so that is encouraging. Uh, we do need Americans, though, to get up to speed on how our system of government is supposed to work. We have a, a catastrophic failure on that front. Yep. OK, that's great. All right. So I'll have to let you go in a minute because I know you're busy. But have you got any final thoughts before you take off? Uh, well, I just I appreciate you having me on, Tony. I love your show. I get a lot of uh, feedback from your viewers. Um, you know, you've got a, a huge fan club, including a lot of people in America. Uh, that's ex- exciting. Um, I did just write a, a big article. It just came out in the New American Magazine. I encourage people to take a look. It's about uh, an agency within UNESCO that is promoting one world spirituality in classrooms around the world. It's called the Mahatma Gandhi uh, Institute for Education for Peace and Sustainable Development. And um it's run by communists, new agers, and pagans, and neuroscientists and psychiatrists. And their goal, according to their website, is to transform the minds of our children, uh, to, to move us toward this one world spiritual system. Uh, and so, folks, there really is a diabolical connection to all this globalism. It's not just bad policy ideas that are going to hurt people. It is really uh, something much, much darker than that. Um, you know, the bad economic policies, the bad health policies, those are just symptoms of a much, much more evil problem that we're dealing with and i hope people will understand that so what's that article again and where can they find it uh the headline let me grab it real quick uh we did put a version of it online it's not quite as in depth but it is um un pushing new age spirituality on school children with sel which is uh, short for social emotional learning and neuroscience um and and i do hope people will take a look at this because it's just it's the tip of the iceberg for um, something that is so monstrous, a a move to shift us not just toward a one world government, a one world economy, but also a one world religious system that you really don't have to do a lot of research until you you get to the demonic part. I mean, these are people who openly say they're talking to spiritual entities. These are people who uh, founded organizations like the Lucifer Publishing Company. I mean, that's how obvious it is. And it's just right beneath the surface. You don't have to go into the, you know, smoky rooms to figure this stuff out. couple clicks on on their own websites and you'll get to the truth. Um, and again, the target is our children. That's the thing that I think is so critical for parents, uh, Christian parents to recognize your children are in the crosshairs of the enemy and you have a God-given responsibility. Forget the talk of rights. You have a God-given responsibility to protect your children, to disciple your children. If you don't do it, the enemy's going to do it. And so, um, you know, just in, in the strongest possible terms, um, I would urge all Christian parents and even grandparents also uh, protect the precious children that God entrusted to you. That's very good. And just uh, my closing thoughts on it is uh, I'm sure many of our listeners realize that the meditation room at the United Nations is administered by the Lucius Trust, formerly the Lucifer Publishing Company, and that mm. should that's the spiritual center of the United Nations. So that should tell you, what the United Nations is about, really, anyway. And then this is just an outflow of that, what you're just expressing. It's a kind of an inevitable outflow of what's obviously always been the spiritual heart of the UN. Yep. And then that's how you get to these pagan ideas about climate and Mother Earth and, yeah. uh, you know, carbon emissions and things. Um, none of that would be possible without this uh, evil at the foundation. True. Well, thank you, Alex. It's been another fascinating discussion and, um, boy, cram a lot into a short time, but it's all well worth hearing. So thank you. Thank you so much, Tony. I appreciate it. God bless you. Bless you too. And folks, don't forget to visit aminutetomidnight.com, our website, and subscribe to us there. And A Minute to Midnight's run 100% by donations. A huge thank you to the people that do donate to help us. And you can do that at our website, aminutetomidnight.com. 
and the music used I've written, played and recorded. So God bless folks and uh, God willing we'll be back with another episode in a few days time. So stay safe and keep your eyes on the Lord.